Hi and welcome to Knit with Hannah. I'm Hannah, I'm here with Knitting Nanta to help you knit with ease, confidence and joy. And we're talking about one of the beauties of baby knitting today and that is the fact that because we're knitting small items it's either not that expensive to get the yarn to knit something or we can head to the stash. And a yarn stash can be really useful if you have leftover yarn um, for all sorts of reasons whether it's part balls, whole balls, or multiple balls of uh, the same yarn, perhaps in different colours, then it's ideal opportunity to use that for baby knitting. What we're looking for when we are knitting for baby, more often than not, is something that's washable. So that would be cotton, it might be bamboo, it might be a cotton linen mix, it could even be a cotton acrylic mix. Obviously you will know that we're doing the knit along at the moment and that uses four colours of a single yarn. We're going to talk about that kind of leftover at the end. Now let's start with part balls. Part balls of yarn can be so useful and you can find lots of different things to knit with them. Of course you can knit stripes, so if you want to knit a single thing you can knit stripes. But if you want to knit small things then use up half a ball of yarn or you know even a third of a ball so many things take a lot less yarn than you might think first of all let's talk about washable wipes how many times are there wet wipes just sat there being used and packets and packets of them going through um, it's more common these days for people to actually want reusable washable wipes so you could sit there and make a stash of them if you have a lovely set of leftover cotton yarn probably dk or four ply would be best and then all you have to do is make squares and rectangles all sorts of different shapes um plain textures rather the garter stitch or moss stitch something very simple so that it's not too it's it's got a little bit of texture on it so it will take away mess but also there's, um, you know, a feeding time, weaning time. Um, it's just mess on the face and the hands that just needs to be got rid of. And a little bit of texture is good with that. But they can go straight in the machine. Cotton is perfect for this. And they're easy to wash and reuse. So that's an ideal knit. Just squares and rectangles. Just sit there and knit, basically. The other thing you can do with part balls are things like socks and booties. Perfect, they're quick knits. You can just knit up a few. And a gentle rib in them, at the cuff, will mean that they last a little bit longer. Um, so that they might be too big on the feet, but they will just gently sit around the ankle and then they will grow um, as the baby grows and they will still fit them um, for at least a few months. So that is also a possibility. Um, scratch mitts too. I um, I knitted these in an emergency knit once. I think I've done them twice now. Mum's just reached out to me and said, help, I don't know what to do, where to find them. I can't find them anywhere. In scratch mitts, it doesn't take much. You can knit a square or a rectangle with a cuff at the, at the top, just a single one by one rib. Again, it's holding it on, but it's not tight. It's not forced. You don't have to have a tie on it actually just sits there and it's comfortable enough so they're not trying to um, resist it and yeah scratch mitts are perfect for leftover yarns they're ideal in emergencies to knit them that's one of the reasons um, I keep leftover cotton in case there's that kind of knit that's needed and I can just dive into it and use it there are lots of other small knits you can create um, with part balls the simplest thing if you've seen my lavender bags over on the website, that kind of thing, to take things out of the house, like a packet of tissues, or just stuff a few washable wipes in, you can knit them the size of lavender bags, or you can just size it up a bit, add a few more stitches to the row, and um, make a slightly larger rectangle. That kind of thing, it's ideal for mums to just take things out of the house, you don't need Ziploc bags everywhere. It will prevent condensation building up, that sort of thing. Okay, so if in your stash you have full balls, 50 grams of yarn, and perhaps, you know, at a push you might have a 100 gram ball just sitting around if you're lucky. 
This is where you can start knitting things like hats, washcloths and bibs. So the 50 gram balls will make you a baby hat, it will make you a bib, it will make you at least one washcloth, possibly two. The 50 gram I've used to make a decent sized washcloth, sort of a large square. But if you want to make a slightly smaller one, then you could probably make three with two balls of yarn. So that's definitely an option for you. Once you get to slightly larger skeins or balls of yarn, then 100 grams, you'd be surprised how far it might go, especially for a small baby. Um, if you're knitting a cardigan for a newborn, you, all you need is 100 grams, you may even have some left over. Tank top, romper suit, baby grow, all of those things are very possible with 100 grams of yarn. And of course, once we get to larger balls, then we are talking mammoth, mammoth proportions. I try to avoid large balls of yarn because as the ball gets larger, there's more likelihood for tangles as you start knitting. The yarn starts coming out of the ball and guess what? There's a knot. There's another knot and then there's another knot. So these big tangles, these big clumps of yarn can come out of the center of the ball of yarn and you just feel completely stuck. 100 grams is pretty much the highest size of ball I would go for at the moment. If you have multiple full balls, remember this does not have to be all the same color. If two balls of yarn in the same color, just because you bought extra for a particular project, then that's fine. You may even have bought yarn for a project and never knitted it and known that it probably wasn't right for that project in the first place. If that sat there, then of course you can knit what you'd like. But if you have different colours of the same yarn, very similar to the four colours that we are knitting the baby blanket um, knit along with. Do join us for that, I'll leave the link in the description below. But if you want to join us for the knit along, then you just need four balls of the shiny happy cotton from Book Wool and the Gang. Any other Aran or worsted weight yarn we could probably go with as well. So definitely, if you have different colours of the same yarn, then you could go with what I'm doing here, and that is knitting a blanket in multiple colours. I have three different colours here. So I've basically, I've needed four balls of yarn, two of the mushroom, um, one of the uh, purpley colour here, and one of the yellow. And I'm knitting up that blanket quite happily with four different colours, uh, three different colours. And that's just, it'd be useful, it would be nice, it'd be quite interesting. Colour blocks are fun. Why not go for it? You'd be quite amazed at how much creativity you can have. When I was young, we went to this craft fair um, when we were on holiday. And my mum and I just kind of like made our way towards this table where a lady was knitting jumpers. And we actually loved the idea of getting one of those jumpers. The mum said, OK, Hannah, you can have one. What colours do you want? Because you can stand there and say, I want that colour, that colour, that colour and that colour. And that was what we got. It was navy and red and yellow and teal. It was lots of different colours. But that was the beauty of it. So do not feel afraid to do that, especially for children. It's good fun. It stands out. It means that it's interesting and they're not just like every kid in the playground um, and like every, every, every other baby in the buggy. But that is exactly the kind of knit that you could definitely knit for a baby. If you have different colored balls, you can use blankets. Again, tank tops, cardigans, sleep sacks even. You may need more than 100 grams of yarn for a sleep sack. Very likely you will. So if you want to knit a full sleep sack, go ahead and use two different or three different colours of full balls. And there you are. You've got a sleep sack. And it's good fun. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, following the exact path of every other knitter, of every pattern on the planet. Go for it. Make your colour blocks. Have fun. And if you have two different colours, go for a cushion cover for a nursery. Maybe you just don't have enough for a baby blanket, but you want to knit something. Again, like I mentioned before, the cushion cover will last for longer. That cushion could be in the nursery and in the child's bedroom for many years. They might use that for, you know, even a couple of decades. They might take it to university with them because they like it so much. You just don't know. So those are some, some ideas. I'm sure you've got lots of ideas yourself. And if you do have ideas, 
um, then put them in the comments. The one thing I would say is, yes, there's an opportunity to knit toys. I'm not that keen on stuffing knitted fabric because the stuffing, the wadding can push through the stitches. Sometimes the stitches just aren't thick enough. I'd rather not expose the child or the baby to the wadding um, if you knit a teddy bear or something like that. Um, there are whole books. I mean, Jean Greenhouse, bless her heart. Those were meant for display rather than for cuddling, I think. That's how they were presented in the books. And I kind of go along those lines as well. If you want something for display, then make it obvious that it's for display. But you're much better off knitting something that covers something that's already got a fabric on it. Like you would knit a cover for a cushion or buy a teddy bear and knit a cardigan or a hat or a scarf for it. Something like that. So those are your suggestions. Do come and join the knit along. We are knitting baby blankets. We are knitting corner to corner baby blankets and we have the three different colourways suggested. There are kits left as I film this for the UK. Uh, as I film this there are only um, six left I think but there may be fewer by the time you watch this. We start on the 18th of March so if you're watching this after the 18th of March ah you missed it sorry. <laughs> and there will be more knit along so do join the email waiting list you're more than welcome you will get a newsletter every week and you'll hear about things that are opening up and starting before I release them anywhere else okay thank you so much for joining me today I'm leaving this video here for you with the knit along details I will see you next week bye for now Phenetic.